Scanning for audio. Welcome to another Tin Dog Podcast. This time, a rather brief one, talking about a lovely two-episode story with the fifth Doctor, yes, Vegetable Man himself, Peter Davison. The Awakening. Hmm. Well, we've arrived. There will be no visitors to the village. It's been isolated from the outside world. No one can enter or leave. Do that. Can't I? It's been done. Malice come. Malice has got a war, isn't he? He makes fighting worse. He makes him hate more. The malice is just a superstition. No. I've seen malice. We have but one last battle to fight. Join us. See the merit of what we do. Just be grateful. It is the stranger who is to be crowned Queen of the Maid. It so easily could have been you. This is no game. You are about to take part in an event that will change the future of mankind. is one of those stories a bit like Black Orchid, very easily forgotten by fans. No one's particular favourite, and here it comes along in a box set with the gunfighters. Yes, it's the sort of thing that fans buy, and you know, that's not a bad thing. I remember The Awakening being on around the time that I would constantly be late for scout meetings on the grounds that Doctor Who was so much more important. I've told the story far too many times about how I was late one final time, and the scout leader took me to one side and said, in that menacing way that scout leaders so often do, you have to work out which is more important, Doctor Who or... And you know, by the time he'd said the word or, I'd already made the decision. A decision that's kept me going for, well, the rest of my life. Enough about that sort of nonsense, and let's talk about the awakening itself. Yes, it's much, much better than I remember it being, no surprise there. It's got yet another liver bird in it, so if you're playing a particularly odd drinking game concerning Doctor Who and liver birds or Liverpoolian actresses or whatever, you go girl, you drink. Actually, I'm being flippant. Let's talk about what the story's about first, and then we can discuss in greater depth anything else that comes to mind. Again, taken from the press release. In the second story, that's in the Earth Story box set, The Awakenings, the TARDIS has brought the Doctor, Tegan and Turlow to the picture postcard village of Little Hodgham. Tegan has come to visit her grandfather, well-known local historian Andrew Verney, but he seems to be missing. Dun dun da! The residence of... doesn't actually say dun dun da in the press release. Just thought I'd mention that one now. The residence of Little Hodgham, led by the obsessive Sir George Hutchinson, are playing a vicious war game to enact a recreation of the battle in the Civil War fought there in 1643. Each of the TARDIS crew witnesses a terrifying apparition from the past. The Doctor realises that he faces a far greater menace than the unstable Hutchinson, an ancient and alien force of evil is at work, one which will glory in the slaughter of them all. Now this ancient demon thing is of course embedded in a church. Now it's ringing a few bells with some of you classic fans, isn't it? It's got a lot of parallels with the demons. Unlike the demons, it's not seven episodes long. Yes, there is a thing in the basement stroke walls of the crumbling old church. The church in the demons wasn't old and crumbling. Yes, there's a particularly similar effect at the very end of the story that's not going to come as a surprise to anyone. But the creature in this is 
well, meant to be synthetic. That's the giveaway, that's the cunning bit. Yes, there's alien intervention, but that's kind of where the parallels end. Oh, and yes, of course, there's a May Queen. Now, if character options were doing a range of ridiculously obscure figures, the Tegan range would consist of this one, an air hostess costume, and the multicoloured velveteen dress thing. You see, you put a Janet Fielding story on the TV for me to review, and Janet Fielding oozes out of the TV and just gets you talking about high heels and costumes. This woman is a feminist icon, a campaigner, and yet when she's on TV, she talks about, okay, she'll talk about the lighting and a lack of rehearsal time, but that's a standard default setting for actors. No, Janet Fielding will talk about hair, clothes, high heels, and it kind of affects you when you're listening to commentaries, because your respect for her wins slightly. Now, admittedly, I just want to talk to her about feminist theory, especially as it pertains to Doctor Who. But that's another conversation for another time. And perhaps one day I will get to discuss these things with her. But until then, all I have are the commentaries. And on those commentaries, all I have is conversations about hair and makeup. And people seeing how young they looked then. And let's face it, it was 20 odd years ago. Yes, they looked younger. No surprise there then. You see, I'm rambling now and I haven't actually discussed much about the story. Yes, it's one of the ones I had on VHS, and I only watched a few times, but mainly because there was an error on my copy and a big line through it in one of those please adjust your tracking things, which never truly fixed it. Here we've got it in glorious DVD vision, and it's really quite nice. It fills in a lovely hour. If you've got some time to kill, it's great. It has the pacing of a new Doctor Who story, because of course, squashed together into an omnibus format, you comes in about the same length of time, about 45 minutes. Now the whole business with the malice trying to recreate the war such as everyone can end up killing each other is, is fair enough. The malice itself, well it's, and I hate using this phrase, I really do, of its time. Which basically translates as, don't think badly of it, it's not brilliant. There's a genuinely nice featurette on this disc called Living Next Door to Malice. Yes, I know what that's a reference to. And Oh, sorry, according to my notes, it's not called that. Well, there's a giveaway. It really should have been called that. Called Making the Malice. Well, it really should have been called Living Next Door to Malice because the guy who has it, has it in his house on the lounge wall. Yeah, the ultimate Doctor Who fan. He's in the running, I think. I don't think my wife would put up with that. It's a thought, though, isn't it? An enormous Doctor Who fan. It would be the equivalent of having the face of Bo in your front room, only slightly less animated. Crashing on. As always with these old stories, it's the extras that have to sway you into buying them. Now, you've probably already bought this because you bought the Gunfighters after my marvellous review last time. But that's not quite it, is it? You need to know what you get. Well, you've got your two 25-minute episodes, which is why this belongs in a box set, because who in their right minds is going to pay 20-odd quid for 50 minutes? Well, we will, but we'd rather not admit that. So you've got a commentary, again, moderated by Toby Haydock, who's particularly good at this sort of thing, and I'm very glad to have him around. He kind of pushes people in the right direction without overstepping the mark. He's getting much, much better at this. On this, you've got the director, Michael Owen Morris, and script editor Eric Sayward. Eric's always got stuff to say about Doctor Who. Nothing lets you down here. Return to Little Hodcombe. Nice little documentary. Director, again, Michael Owen, and the actors, Janet Fielding and Keith Jane, and the script editor, Uncle Eric, return to the three villages that played host to the locations for The Awakening. Now, there's also some lovely interviews with the locals. Well worth seeing. As I've said, making the malice, visual effects Tony Harding and model maker Richard Gregory are reunited with the malice prop. Lovely little chat, very nice. A great little now and then. What more can I say about those? Here's something now, here's something then. Oh look, it's an old village, looks kind of the same. Cutting room floor. Now, this story was originally intended to be four episodes long. And that's why it appears a little bit crammed or has the same pacing as a new story. Crammed is kind of how I see it, but that's just me. 
So from the cutting room floor, you've got extended and deleted scenes from this time-coded VHS, which show you what you could have had, plus some location stuff from the film rushes. Now, one of the reasons that this story is most famous is for something called the Golden Egg Awards, which was an outtakes program, uh, sort of like Harry Hill's TV Burp, or, or something along those lines, but basically errors that occurred. Now, famously, a horse walks through a piece of prop. Ooh, it's hilarious. Well, anyway, it won an award for being hilarious, and uh, indeed it was. So that's here, together with Noel Tidybeard. You've got your photo gallery, your isolated music school, which will, of course, keep at least two podcasters very, very happy. Coming soon, and I've discussed what that is. Oh, Paradise Towers, spare me. No, I'm doing it next time. It's fine. We're doing Paradise Towers. Or possibly Tortured. Or possibly some big finish. Hell, we'd do something. Radio Times listings as PDFs. And, of course, as always, my lovely, lovely production notes as subtitles. Oh, what would I do without them? Suffice to say that this is indeed a much better story than I thought. I'm sorry that that's become a catchphrase by default, but it's true. I didn't watch this much on VHS, but I will be digging it out a lot more to watch it on DVD. So before I go, here's Hoostrology. And now a Hoostrology reading for Pamela Jackson, born on the 12th of May 1961. Born before the time of the first Doctor. You were born on the anniversary of the showing of Planet of the Daleks Part 6 and of the Doctor Who TV movie. You share your birthday with Pamela St. Clemens, Royce Mills and Catherine Tate. You were the most blessed of us all. You may have beheld the lost classics. Deep in your memories the truth we all seek. You have much to do. Bury that pesky weapon of mass destruction and enrol your granddaughter in school. Beware interfering teachers and faulty chameleons. Take advantage of people who wake from an icy slumber, tired and confused. For one night only, you will shine like a star, telling others things that they do not want to hear, but are forced to believe, will not be easy. A kiss causes issues amongst friends, while new friends are confused into submission. A redhead is so much more than bothered. And with that, I'll fade away, bid you all farewell, and speak to you all very, very soon, probably about Doctor Who. Be seeing you. You have been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk.